Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ashona. Welcome back to my game engine series. So last time we talked about how we could clear specific frame buffer texture attachments. Check out that video if you haven't already. And today we are hopefully going to be more or less concluding our whole mouse picking trilogy. I think it's a trilogy. It might be four episodes actually. But um, basically uh, we are going to be uh, making it so that instead of just outputting the value 50 every time we have to render a pixel into that additional kind of entity ID buffer, we're going to actually hopefully be able to uh, write in our actual entity ID into that texture. So let's take a look at how that's going to work uh, and get on with things. Okay, so um, again, last time, just a little quick little recap. We basically, uh, the state that we're at right now is that if we look at this like pink cube, for example, we see the value negative one if our mouse is over empty space because we're now clearing this specific texture attachment that, that's holding this data to negative one at the beginning of every frame. And then if we are over any, any entity, and by the way, even though this looks like, um, uh, even though this looks like it's uh, all one entity. This is three different ent entities, left, right, and top. And now we have a fourth one. You can see it's still 50, right? So we are actually, these are three entities and they do have different IDs and you'll see, the, you'll see that in a minute, hopefully today. So how do we make that happen? Well, luckily for us, every single entity in Hazel has an ID, right? If we go to the entity class, we can see that we have this ent entity, uh, entity handle. The type is ent entity. What is that? Let's take a look at it. I always encourage you guys to actually dig into the source code and see what things actually are. So it is an ID type. What is an ID type? It's an ant ID type. So much indirection. I love it. I don't. Um, <laughs> that's the type. It's a uint 32 t So we are, what are we storing inside our um, buffer, inside our frame buffer as a texture attachment? We are storing a GL red integer. Well, that's the texture format. So basically it's a signed integer. This is an unsigned integer that is a signed integer. We could have stored an unsigned integer. I just thought I wanted negative one just to be really clear for you guys that negative one is not a valid entity because zero is a valid entity. So we couldn't clear it with zero. So we have negative one when we have two billion other entity IDs, I think we'll be fine ultimately. But the point is it's an integer, right? This whole thing is an integer. So what we should be able to do is for every entity that we render, I want to be able to take this ent entity and somehow get it into my shader. So at the, at the end of the day, really, I just output it here. So that should be my kind of ent entity value, right? I want it to be over here instead of the value 50. So what are our options for this? Okay, well, how do we get data to the shader in the first place from C++? Well, the simplest way is to use uniforms, right? But uniforms obviously have the limitation of you can only set a uniform in between draw calls. You can't just set uniforms. I don't know. You can't like batch together uniforms, right? Like um, you can't set the same uniform for three different. Like, it doesn't make sense, right? It's not kind of like a per vertex thing or a per object thing. It's a per draw call thing, and so um, that doesn't really work for us at the moment with our two D rendering because, as you probably know, um, or you should know if you've been following the series, if we look at scene. Um, our render and the way that render the way that rendering happens the way that we actually draw a quad I just completely it just lost where I was the way that we draw a quad is we call this draw quad function Which does it draw the quad? No, it does not draw the quad it Adds it to the vertex buffer and then at the end of the frame when we call end scene and it calls flush And I pressed on the wrong one. Ah, I was going so well um, and I press uh, and, and uh, we flush, right? Then it does a single draw call with all of our quads in our scene. So those four quads that you saw with the white square as well as the three kind of faces of the cube, that was a single draw call. So there's no way that we can actually add it as a uniform, right? What we can do instead, and there's a few different things you can do based on like, well, if you're instancing, you have ways to do that. If you're not instancing, there's a few different ways we could do it. But, uh, but the uh, simplest way and the way that we're going to be doing it is just packing it into the vertex attributes. So what is uh, what happens for every quad? Developer power shall go away. What happens um, to every quad that we draw? We obviously set the vertex buffer to particular values like the texture index, like the tiling factor, like the entity ID as well. Now this has one extra little piece of limitation, right? Uh, if you want to do this, 
Um, and, and I want to I mention a few things here, right? But if you want to do this, the renderer now somewhat needs to be aware of entities. Is that acceptable? Well, I see no reason for it not to be acceptable. I mean, some programmers like to hide things from other things as a matter of principle, and that's fine, I guess. But ultimately speaking, this is renderer 2D is Hazel's renderer. Hazel works with entities. Why would the two not know each other, right? That That's not a huge deal to me, right? Um, tying things together, it, and again, it might not even have to, it's not like I'm suddenly going to include ent into renderer 2D. All it needs is an integer. All it needs to know is that, hey, this quad that you're rendering, I want like an additional little payload on it. We'll call it the ID of the draw. That's what I want you to do, and that's what I want you to output. But the other important thing here to note is that this is a editor thing. This is not like a runtime thing, right? You, you are not going to be outputting an extra, like, you know, you're not going to have an extra frame buffer attachment just for entity IDs in your shipped game that could potentially be running on like a phone, right? That's just not going to happen. First of all, that's a drain on performance. But second of all, unless your game specifically needs mouse pick, like will tap to pick things, which isn't that uncommon. Um, and if it does need that, maybe you would do it in a different way anyway. And maybe that should be your job, not the, not Hazel's job, unless you do like, you know, you expose some kind of like, um, you know, ray cast or something into the 3D world that maybe you want to do there, whatever. But the point is what we're writing here is specifically for the editor. So this does not need to exist everywhere. So what we end up doing is first of all, this shader, we're quickly realizing that this shader is becoming an editor shader. This isn't a shader that we use for run, like for shipped games because having an additional attribute here that's going to be our entity ID, right? This is, this is what we're going to do. In fact, we've just written that code. This is not something that needs to ship in a game, right? And so, um, take, just remember that because a lot of people, you know, are very quick to point out, Hey man, that's, that's so inefficient. That's so, I can't believe you're doing this. Okay. First of all, show me how inefficient it is. Show me some actual profiling data and then maybe I'll listen to you, but also, Hey man, it's for the editor. It's for the editor that, you know, this is, Hazel. Hazel's going to be a game engine. You don't expect Unreal Engine 4 or whatever to run on like, you know, a Chromebook or something. Like it requires a decent computer to run properly at least, right? So in other words, my kind of uh, allowance for performance here is slightly different. My budget, we'll say, in terms of frame time is slightly different for Hazel's editor, for Hazelnut, than it is for Hazel's runtime, which we will refine when we actually get to crossing that bridge, right? So it's, it's a bit of a different story. Um, but also some things are just a lot faster than people seem to think. And so people always like, like saying, oh my gosh, that takes, that's too slow. It takes 0.5 milliseconds. And it's like, well, dude, maybe that's something that I'm willing to uh, part with, especially if it, for example, only happens when we click or something like that, right? Because, well, actually this isn't, none of this is slow really. The, the, the only slow part we've really introduced is this kind of read back, which again, as I mentioned, only needs to happen when we click technically, unless you want to do certain other things. Anyway, I don't, I don't want to get into some rant again, um, but this is what we're going to do, right? So how do we set this up? And, and I guess the, the primary reason I started talking about this is because at the moment, right, what we have is we have a quad vertex. I'm going to add a little section here that says editor only, and then I'm going to add my entity ID. The reason is this doesn't need to exist for the runtime, but I don't want to start making like a editor quad vertex and runtime quad vertex. I don't want to start doing that yet, right? Because when we actually get to the runtime, that's when I want to start doing that. For now, we're very much focused on the editor. And the other thing is, guess what? You can run the runtime with this and not use it, right? Um, um, unless you're actually getting to the point where the performance is really tight and you're like, okay, what can I do? Let's try and optimize this now. Then you can start being like, okay, well, this doesn't need to exist. Let's remove it from the runtime. But, um, you know, just, uh, just, a, just kind of a, um, just a, just a general word to everyone to just relax a little bit because, uh, you know, it's okay. It's okay. We'll remove slow things when necessary. Don't worry. I'm very capable of optimizing code. Okay. So let's go into our drawing functions. The big thing here though, is again, I want to draw a quad. I don't care about the entity ID. 
can you please just not record it? That's valid. Um, that's totally valid. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, actually add a different set of these functions. There's a few ways you could do this. We could, again, add another overload to this function with like int entity ID, set it to negative one by default so that, well, you can print negative one if you want. It's like the entity is not there. It's like it's the clear color, right? But um, what I want to do is actually add a different kind of entity, right? Um, so, and by different entity, sorry, I mean a different function. So one thing I started thinking of though is we probably want to provide a default for this. In fact, we probably should provide a default for everything. We haven't because they get they all get set, but this is something that maybe we don't wanna worry about, right? I also don't really like the idea of duplicating all of the functions either. Um, we could obviously create another, cause we have a lot of these, right? We've got one, two, three, vec twos, vec threes, um, textures, not textures. Yes, we just have that. And then again, adding another set of these overloads uh, I really don't know if, if we should do it this way. Um, because what I was going to do off the top of my head was just draw quad entity or something like that. And then that would include like entity ID. Um, which is fine, but the only downside is that... Well, yeah, because th the thing is like... Again, what this enables you to do is, first of all, for things like UI, like, you know, you're not only drawing quads as part of, like, a sprite renderer component. That's actually a good point, though, right? Because specifically, remember, the way that we're using this, the way that we're actually drawing this, maybe this is worth doing. Um, so let's go to, like, scene. Maybe this is worth exploring. Because um, Whilst I did write this code on stream ages ago during like a live stream that I actually posted on YouTube, I'll have it linked up there as well. Unless I forget. Um, that was uh, like, that was more rough. I wasn't really refining the API. I was just getting code to work. So uh, now I'm thinking more about the design actually live during this episode. But, you know, we're passing in the sprites. Sprites are going to eventually have textures Maybe it's worth having a function called draw sprite. Draw quad is fine, right? But remember that there's 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 kind of different use cases for this. There's different contexts for all of this, right? On one hand, draw quad can be used for rendering like, you know, things that have nothing to do with entities, things have, that have nothing to do with your scene. Like for example, I want to render a button. I want to render something part of the UI. I want to render a little, uh, I don't know, like a little visualizer for like a light or like a little bounding box visualizer. That's not, that's not, that's just like a debug thing, right? But it's still like a 2D rendering in a way, right? Because it's a 2D primitive. So um, n n these things don't necessarily have to do with a scene in Hazel or like the entity component system. So maybe we will actually use a function called draw sprite. And the thing that makes this special, right? This draw sprite function, which first of all, let's go back to scene and see how it's handled. So it actually does get taken in from a transform, right? Um, so we'll actually grab this. Draw sprite will grab a transform. I don't wanna use the position. But the thing that the, this will actually do is instead of taking all of this stuff in, I wanted to take in a sprite component. controversial, perhaps, because now I'm using the entity component system. I mean, this isn't really the entity component system. It's like the component, but I'm using it inside here, right? Now, by the way, this is going to open the door to a lot of cool stuff because at the moment, I mean, what are we even doing, man? At the moment, look at this, right? This can only draw a colored sprite. We can't use textures. We don't have tiling factors. We don't have tint colors. These are all things that we can add to this sprite render component and they will all, all be within here. It will take this in and then it can potentially call one of these functions with the right parameters. That's kind of what I'm doing in a way, but we'll probably end up writing our own draws anyway. So inside here, um, let's uh, move this over here. I'll do this here. So at the end, we'll do our kind of sprite stuff. So sprite render component. Now, what else do we need? 
we do need the entity ID, right? So I'm just going to do int entity ID. That's it. So now we have a function that we can run instead of what we did uh, with renderer draw quad, we're going to do renderer draw sprites, right? Because these are sprite renderer components. Uh, transform get transform sprite and then the object which guess what is going to be just entity cast into an int that's it let's get rid of this function now and let's make that other function work i think that's i actually really like that idea to be honest um i just came up with this now uh but i like it so there you go sometimes i do stuff live um and I think this will work out well. So let's go ahead and implement this function. Um, we'll have to also include components here. I don't know if it's worth, it might be worth like dividing components soon into various header files, just because we don't necessarily need to include all the components here. Um, what is this in scene? What's even in the components file though? It's, it's just like, we don't, we don't include, um, Oh, we do include entity, which probably does include ent. So we do include ent, technically. But, um, so scriptable entity includes entity. What's that even used for? For the native script component. We might move this stuff out of here because, yeah, this is... Most of this stuff is just data, right? But this scriptable entity is a bit more complex and it has an entity which includes entity, which includes ent. So it does end up being a little messy, but, um, we can deal with that later. All right, so draw sprite is implemented. Um, how do we make that happen? So, I mean, ultimately at the, at the end of the day, what are we trying to draw? We're trying to draw a non-textured sprite with a transform, which is just this function at the moment. I'm going to copy this. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not too happy about the divergence of code. Um, but the problem is that, the problem is that it actually has an entity ID, but they all do at the moment. So maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. Okay, let's take this away. This should be negative one anyway. I don't know why we're at zero. Um, let's take this away and let's do this. Let's call draw quad. We're going to call that with transform with src.color. Um, so that's this one, right? It's got a tiling factor. It's got a tint color. I'm going to add an entity ID of negative one. Okay. To specifically, but this takes in a texture. Okay. Oh, because you can't have tint colors if it's not that. Okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll extend both of these, right? With default parameters. So draw quad, now we'll have an entity ID. This I think will only exist until we remove this because we actually have a runtime thing. But it's negative one anyway, so you'll be totally fine to do with, uh, you'll you'll definitely be able to do that, this stuff with, um, you know, if you don't want to draw an entity, it's just gonna set negative one there, which could be a bit of a waste, but um, I think it's okay. These are kind of the things that I think about <laughs> when I write code like this. Okay, so that's done. Uh, and then we also have our, this one, which again, we'll do the same thing. Uh, one more thing we have to do, by the way, is actually add it to here. So shaded data type int. Um, I don't think we have an int. Mm. We might have to do something special here because this layout may not be able to deal with integers because there's actually a special attribute pointer function you have to call for ints. Um, so vertex buffer, where does this happen though? We have a layout. Where do we set the layout? In vertex array. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Can someone please help me by the way with where this code came from because i didn't write it and this is like this is for like instance rendering which we have not covered yet so i don't know why this is here to be honest um so maybe someone will track that down for me in the comments or on chat or whatever and let me know because i'm very confused anyway um so basically what we need to do for these right is something a little bit different we need to use a different function um and i think for bull as well might be wrong. Whatever. 
I'll just write the code and then you guys can fix it on pull request, you know me. Um, and that is basically, we can enable it, right? Um, but we use vert vertex attrib i pointer instead, right? Um, there's no normalization for this. And I think that's the only difference, right? But this is used for integers, not for floating point types. Um, this is still fine, I think. There's just some weird offset stuff going on, but this is, uh, yeah, everything else happens the same. So it's just important to use that I function for integers. Uh, otherwise, I don't think it'll work properly. So back over here now. So we've got everything basically figured out now, right? We've made sure that inside renderer2d, we're setting this as an int, which it is. Uh, let me just line this up a bit. I always, I never like it when stuff isn't, well, I don't know. It's not, it's not that I like align everything. It's just some things. Cause I'm definitely not one of those alignment freaks where everything's aligned, but some things like layouts and stuff I like to have neat. And I think I did the same thing with this um, during the stream, I aligned it. <clears throat> and like this as well, you know, that's why I have the plus zero here. It just looks nice. Okay, and it's easier to read. So um, we have the uh, color and then I think just the entity ID and that's all we need to call. So that will draw quad. Um, and then obviously what this, at the moment this function looks fairly useless because it just does this and we could have just done that from scene renderer, but this function will actually uh, check to see if the sprite renderer component uses a texture instead, maybe use a different, well, not a different shader, but it'll pass that into the shader. It'll deal with tiling factors. It'll do a lot of stuff. That's why it's here. Okay. Um, now we need to make the shader do what it needs to do. So let's go into here. And so position, color, texture, quad. Okay, all of this stuff. Um, so in entity ID, let's do this. Let's do out, uh, flat int. Don't think it matters if it's flat or not, to be honest, because there's nothing that they're, they're going to be identical values, just like with text index for each, uh, for each, um, vertex. But anyway, so yeah, we'll do that. Uh, and then V and CID is just simply what we'll output here. And that actually should be it. Like if I just hit F5, I think we should just be good. We had some kind of issue here. That's all right. So let's open pink cube. All right, not quite. So it's, it's coming in as negative one. Oh, actually I know, no, actually. Do I know why? Um, let's go check it out. So, okay, well, that's kind of promising in a way. Negative one, at least it's not like garbage values. Probably just forgot something, to be honest. Um, so yeah, draw quad takes in what now? A transform, a color, and entity ID, which we are providing here, into draw quad. And then that's what it's setting for the quad vertices. So why is that not good? Uh, cause that definitely should be okay. Um, I may have just, uh, I mean, is this the only point where we draw stuff? On update editor, what's this function? On update runtime. I don't know. If, I don't even know if we're using that. So yeah, we're just using the wrong function here. I think that's the problem. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why we have a, yeah. Runtime. So oh, that, that's because we added the editor camera and then we also have a camera in our scene and we kind of can toggle between the two technically. All right. So, um, there you go. So if you look at this pixel data over here now, guess what? When we move our mouse over these three faces, you can see that it changes, right? Negative one. And then it's three, it's zero and it's two pretty cool stuff, right? So the beauty of this, and I'll leave you with this before we, so we won't do the actual clicking today, but I will leave you with this, right? We'll be able to see what entity we're hovering over. So when we actually have, uh, where do we have all this stuff usually? So stats, I mean, we'll put it in stats for now, <laughs> but um, maybe over here. Um, so let's do this, text hovered, entity uh, and then we'll do a little s so let's do this um, 
when we read this pixel back, instead of pixel data, and instead of printing it, I want to do m hovered entity. So we'll do entity m hovered entity. We'll set it to that, right? Uh, and then we'll, um, uh, that's actually an entity. Okay, sure. So let's do, let's do that. And then we'll do m hovered entity equals pixel data. Um, we'll do, uh, okay, so we'll do this. If pixel data is negative one, hover entity um, equals nothing, right? Um, else we'll do pixel data and this scene, so active scene. Is that a, how does that work? Handle and the scene. What's that? A ref scene. So why are you upset? Oh, because, um, handle. No, it's entity. Okay, there we go, right? So, um, I mean, ultimately I'll combine this so it's a little uh, bit more so if it's negative one, we'll do that. Otherwise, we'll do that. Maybe that will make more sense. All right, there we go. So, hover entity equals either just a blank ant, like an, an invalid, I guess, empty entity, or an entity that's actually real based on what the value is. And then what we can do here is basically say that. If, um, so we'll do std string, I don't really need to do std string, but we'll do std string name equals um, none. And then if hover entity, we'll set name to hover entity get component, tag component, and then dot tag. Name dot c string. All right. So now what should happen, right, is when we hover our mouse over an entity, it should tell us what entity we're hovering over over here. So hovered entity is none at the moment. And then if I open up pink cube and I hover over a particular entity, you can see up here, hopefully it's very small. Maybe I'll uh, go to I'm GUI layer and actually just make the font size larger, which of course we can't do, or yes we can. Um, 38, yeah, let's do 38. <laughs> way bigger. So if I look at pink cube, you can see now that um, depending on what I hover over, it actually says right, left, top. If I create a new entity and uh, give it a sprite render component and I'll have to move it over here, then you can also see that as I hover over it, it says empty entity because that's what it's called. Um, and then all of those still work, obviously, and everything is good, okay? So hopefully uh, that all makes sense. Let's revert the font size. Um, next time, all we're gonna do is instead of printing this, for example, we can actually just go into like our event, on event, and add a little um, mouse clicked event. And if we click, then, well, we've got the hovered entity. So technically with this system, we could just set the selected entity and scene hierarchy panel to be the hovered entity and our work is done. Um, there are going to be some bugs and some other things in the way. For example, you'll note that, uh, you know, if I'm moving an entity, I probably don't want to select other stuff just because my mouse button's pressed or, you know, sometimes when like, for example, I go to left and I want to drag, right? Clicking in this case shouldn't select the entity because if I'm trying to drag this and I click, then technically the this uh, top face is in front and you can see up here it says top. So I don't want that to be, so there, there's a lot of caveats to kind of figure out and fix, I guess, with this, but that's basically the gist of things. And that is how mouse picking is going to work. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button below. Thank you all for watching. Hope you've been enjoying the series. We're getting into some, some of the media stuff now. Don't forget that you can help support the series by going to patreon.com slash the channel and you'll get access to like Hazel Dev and past live streams where I work out this stuff. And uh, there's lots of really exciting stuff going on in Hazel Dev as well. Check out those devlogs definitely if you're interested in where this series is eventually heading to. Hope you have an amazing day and I will see you next time. Goodbye.